20 things only Americans do and think is normal. Really just to see what we got here and see what they be doing over there. They think is normal. Probably going to be crazy to us. So yeah, let's jump straight to this man. You know what I mean? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 things only Americans do. Oh. Uh, get a ton. For this list, we're looking at common beliefs and practices in the United States. They don't need to be exclusively American, just something that Americans are known for. Right. If there's something uniquely American that didn't make our list, unite in the comments to state your picks. Yeah, make sure you guys do that as well. If, if there's things here that you notice that isn't here that you guys are doing, let me know in the comment section. Yeah, I can have my opinion on it as well. Number 20, refer to the USA as America. 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 Uh, I feel like I do as well though. Of the United States of America, referring to the country as America is much less commonplace. Really? After all, there are two entire continents called America, comprising like 35 distinct nations. Right. To only one country on one of those continents as America, too, is really confusing for anyone who doesn't. <laughs> From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America right. <laughs> first <laughs> to be fair i feel like i refer to like all three names us usa and america I, I think i've caught myself saying america more often though calling it the us usa the united states or just the states is much more common in the rest of the world oh wow and so everyone still calls its residents americans which isn't confusing at all you can't say it but you know it's true <laughs> number 19 throw nice. gender reveal parties Culture. Oh, see, that's happening more over here, but it wasn't that big of a thing. But yeah, that definitely it came from the America. World over have traditions to prepare expecting parents and celebrate the expected birth of a child. Thank right. you so much for throwing me this baby shower, girls. I feel so welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> of course. However, Americans have really taken the concept and run with it. An entire industry has been built around baby showers, as oh, well yeah. as their modern relatives' gender reveal parties. Oh, yeah, they're definitely becoming a lot bigger on the other side of the world now. But it's definitely from like America TV shows, American movies. You see them all the time. There. In the 2000s, the latter have become infamous for sometimes absurd levels of showmanship. Yeah, I've seen some, some crazy over the things. top reveals have been responsible for injuries and even disasters. Huh? They remain somewhat controversial, with many people, including Americans, not really getting why they're often made into such big deals. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm like, gonna oh cry. God. Oh my gosh, why are you gonna cry? Because really I'm just really happy for you. Aww. You look like it. You, have, you look like you're happy. <laughs> Number 18, experience huge bathroom stall gaps. Check this way, sir. See, I've seen this so much, but in the comment section, you guys says like, it's not that bad, like people peeking in, but that is so high. Like, why is the gap so big? Bro, why is it so big? God. Every country's <laughs> restrooms have their own quirks, like different sinks and toilet bowls. Right, okay. The U.S. is known for having a high yep. volume of water in their bowls and large gaps in their bathroom stalls, both <laughs> under the door and between the door and the walls. You will literally be able to see everything. Like, you can see kneecaps, the whole shebang, bro. Like, imagine if somebody's, like, tying their shoelace. They're literally going to have eye contact with you. <laughs> Visitors can be taken aback at the lack of privacy. Some right. hold that they're designed for easy cleaning or construction. Others that it allows one to check which stalls are occupied. Although occupancy indicators on the locks can do that too. Yeah. You can just see by like if it's locked or not. Like normally it's a green or a red. Yeah, very interesting. I, I I I don't know. I feel like um it's one of those things that like just one of those things that they've just done. One in there. Isn't that why we have locks on the doors? Well, <laughs> as a backup system, in case a lock is broken, you can see if it's taken. <laughs> a backup system? It might also make it more difficult to get up to no good in there. Whatever the case, right, public okay. bathrooms in the U.S. are built for speed, not comfort. Would you just sit down and go to the bathroom already? <laughs> Number 17, nice. have pharmacies that sell groceries. Yeah, this in is weird. World, pharmacies sell exactly what their name implies. That is definitely American though. Like, you know how like you can get everything everywhere. Like I've seen gas stations that have like everything in. You got clothes, food, whatever. Whatever you need is at the gas station, right? Pharmacies, you need to go get some medicine. You can also do a, you know, a little quick shop for the groceries and stuff. It's kind of smart. They just got everything. 
While you will see tangentially related items like grooming products or hygienic things like toothbrushes, pharmacies don't usually carry food or toys. But yeah. in the US, that's much more common. The country is all about the all-in-one experience. Not oh, only yeah, they are. dedicated grocery stores have pharmacies built in, but pharmacies will also carry groceries. Granted, the selection isn't always great, but if you're desperate for milk and the grocery store is closed or you just don't feel like crossing the street to get there, you can get some. Oh my While god. most of the world still limits drugstores to drugs and self-care products, we have a feeling this one might catch on. Number 16. Yeah, I feel like... Yeah, I feel like that will catch on as well because, you know, more money, right? You go to the pharmacy, you want to get your stuff, you also come out with, like, your shopping as well. Vote before they can drink. Worldwide, the age at which a person can legally drink alcohol is most commonly 18. Yeah. Age usually considered to be adulthood, though it is even earlier in some countries. The voting age on a global scale is also generally 18, for similar reasons. Although, of course, there are exceptions. The Voting Rights Act of 1970 lowered the voting age to 18 for national elections, and the 26th Amendment made the change to 18 permanent for all elections. Yeah, Carla, I feel, I feel like 21 to drink is kind of high, especially when you could do most things at 18. Like, I, I would think if you're able to vote, you're classing an adult, and if you're classing an adult, you can choose if you want to drink or not, right? So I feel like 18 is like the good form. 18 is a good number there, but 21, whatever, a a six for you. But then again, you guys are drinking before 21, let's be honest. But, and 18 yeah. is where it has stayed for the past 50 years. However, the United States requires young adults to wait three years after being able to vote before legally being allowed to drink at 21. This was enacted Seems during high. the 1980s to prevent alcohol-related driving accidents. This law has been an abysmal... Okay failure it hasn't reduced or eliminated drinking it has simply driven it underground behind closed doors right into the most risky and least manageable of settings while it helped in the short term ultimately it hasn't really stopped teenagers from drinking the result is that many people both inside and outside the u.s question the logic of why an 18 year old american can decide who forms the government but not get <laughs> The reality is everyone drinks before they turn 21. 100%. That's why when you go out for your first legal drink, you have to react with that faux surprise like you've never heard of alcohol before. <laughs> Ooh, what does this alcohol taste like? Mmm. Oh, it's unusual. Oh, this is true. Number 15, <laughs> get free refills. I don't care. You guys are all doing that. This is one of my favorites right here. Right, maybe a surprise, but free refills. I'm a massive drink guy. I always need a drink, love my drinks and stuff. So uh who does it bad? But free refills, man. One of the biggest differences between American restaurants this. and the rest of the world are their drink services. Yeah. Most American and many Canadian restaurants and other establishments will offer at least one free refill of a non-alcoholic drink. That's so good. Refill. <laughs> I, I just, I, where is it going? Yeah. That will actually be me in the in restaurant. So maybe it's a good idea not to have every idea is that because of the low cost of drinks, particularly fountain soft drinks, offering a refill won't hurt the establishment's bottom line. Right. Particularly if drinks are not the primary source of income. However, the idea has been slow to catch on in the rest of the world, and it's nowhere near as consistently offered. Yeah. Do you know in the UK, do you know what's crazy? Like you can get free refills over here, right? But the word free is a bit weird because you have to pay more than the original drink. So let's say I can get a Coke. I'll get a Coke for like £2.50, whatever. And then if I want to get a, re a free refill of the Coke, you have to pay like £4. So <laughs> I don't know where the logic is there, but sure. Some man. countries have raised concern that a practice like this can lead to an increase in obesity. Number 14, oh, tip wow. service personnel. All right, everybody cough up some green for the little lady. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. You don't tip? No, I don't believe in it. While the concept <laughs> of tipping waitstaff or other people in the service industry is known worldwide, Few countries have embraced the yeah. concept to the degree the U.S. has. We Labor don't really tip over that much. It's undemocratic and anti-tipping legislation was enacted across several states. But restaurants and rail operators like the Pullman Company embraced tipping because it allowed them, among other things, to hire recently freed slaves without having to pay them. 
Oh Many my God. workers, particularly in the restaurant industry, rely on gratuities to get by, in part because laws allow managers to pay sub-minimum wages to tipped workers. Wow. However, in various other countries, tipping is seen as insulting. They're just... Yeah, I'm really interested, actually. So if any of you guys are working in, like, service, like a waiter, waitress or whatnot, do you guys have, like, a really low wage and then you rely on your tips? Like, what if, um... I suppose it's normal to tip in America, so you're always getting the tips. But like, have you ever had like a bad week where you didn't get many tips or not many customers? And because your wage is so low, it's just been rough. And like, you feel like you worked more hours than the wage or no, does that not happen? It's doing their jobs after all. Each year, Americans spend $40 billion on tips. Yo! That's more than we spend on foreign aid. And Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Never mind, I take that back. My last point I just said, I take that back. You guys are loaded. You guys are 40 bill? More than we spend on gambling. And <laughs> like gambling, it's not entirely clear that tipping makes any sense in the first place. While some countries' workers certainly appreciate it, it isn't expected like it is in the US. Mostly because employees are paid a high enough baseline salary that they don't need yeah. tips to survive. Restaurant owners still pay their servers less than minimum wage, turning what used to be a bribe into an obligation that makes the end of every meal suck. Number 13, obsess over the- I suppose it's kind of good for the restaurant because like, even though you're paying below minimum wage, you know the worker is going to actually work good, right? Because they want the tips, you know what I mean? So, and hopefully the worker as well is getting good money for the tips and the job that they're doing. So it's- it works. It's good for both halves. You know what I mean? But in the UK, you only really tip somebody if you really, really like them. And I mean, like, really like them. Like, they're, they're funny. They're making you laugh or whatnot. You're having good vibes. But most of the time, uh, it don't really happen. It don't really happen. Military. And I think I speak for the rest of the WWE. I certainly speak for myself. I would like to say thank you to all our men and women who choose to don the uniform of the United States military. The American military is probably the best in the world. Yep. As it should be, since it's also one of the best funded militaries in the world. <clears throat> in fact, the U.S. spends several times more on their military than their nearest competitor, China. I've seen a lot of U.S. military videos, and oh my, I'm just glad, glad that uh, we're allies. <laughs> I am very glad we're allies. What's more? <laughs> There are more than a few American citizens who have a higher than average fascination with their own military and its culture. Right. I thank you as, our, uh, as your commander in chief. Very because passionate. you inspire me. Your willingness to serve, to step forward at a time of war and say, send me, is the reason the United States stays strong and free. While other countries certainly appreciate their troops, you don't, say, see as many people wearing camouflage as a legitimate fashion statement. Yeah. Likewise, you don't see movies made elsewhere that glorify the military to the degree that the U.S. does. Yeah, like, literally, like, I'm comparing the U.K. and America here right now. But, like, in the U.K., we're not as passionate about the military as you guys are over there. Like, we respect them and stuff, but, like, no one's gonna, you know, how you see, like, um, Americans talk about their military... You will never really see UK people talk about their military like that. You might see a few, but not many. Do me a favor. Tell my children I love them very much. All right, you alien assholes. In the words of my generation. Yo, who's this guy fired? Part of the American enthusiasm is certainly rooted in patriotism. Still, right. it may also be a reaction to an increasingly anti-military sentiment that has popped up over the last several decades. No oh, wow. War, okay. No war, okay. Oh, well, here you go, boys. These will help you protest. It's good to see that you care about peace, boys. Okay. Wait. Whoa, what? Number 12. Use red plastic cups. If you've ever seen an American movie where a college party happens, chances right. are you've seen characters drinking from red cups. Yep, all the time. It is happening a little bit more in the UK. I, I mentioned this before. Like you, I'm seeing it in shops quite a bit now, the red cups. But it's nowhere near, it's not even close to as common as America. And it's only just started like really being introduced. Um, I'm yet still to see like an actual like party vibe with them. The, I, I've seen a couple, but not many. Um, I just seen them mainly in shops. <laughs> Oh, 
these red plastic or solo cups are everywhere in the U.S. Yeah. The cheap drinking containers are a favorite at parties, both for their durability and their ease of use in party games. While they're also handy for crafts or gardening, they're most famous for their intended purpose. However, the rest of right. the world either doesn't have the United States party culture's emphasis on kegs or lacks the same distinctive cups, originally manufactured by the Solo Cup Company. At most, you might see them at a novelty American-themed party. Number 11. Yeah, they're cool, Wear though. shoes Good idea. inside. Taking off your shoes... Because most of the time, like, at parties, you just, like, use, like, their glasses and stuff, right? So using their cups, you could just throw them away easy. Nice. Nicely done. Before you enter a home, or at least in the entryway, is pretty common etiquette in many countries. Don't do that. Why'd you take your shoes off? So I don't break your nose. And while many Americans do prefer to keep footwear off their floors, it isn't a hard and fast rule like it is in other places. Oh, wait, really? Often, it will depend on whether the person has carpeted floors or hardwood floors, with the latter considered easier to clean. Right. Since it's not considered the norm, though, asking guests to take off their shoes indoors can come across as rude or fussy, and so is often avoided. Wait, no way. I would feel rude. You know, if I went to someone's house and I didn't take my shoes off, like, I, I would at least ask. I'd be like, do you want me to take my shoes off? And it's up to them, right? I'd feel rude if I never asked. Number 10. Eat peanut butter as their go-to spread. Peanuts are grown yeah. and eaten in many parts of the world. But it's the United States and Canada that do most of the peanut butter eating. You guys peanut are crazy about, about peanut butter. butter. Yes. <laughs> The only peanut butter thing I've kind of had, I've had spread before and it's it's okay, but I really like the, have you ever, well, you guys definitely might have had it. <laughs> yeah. But the Kit Kat, I don't know if they do it in America, they probably do the Kit Kat chunky peanut butter. Oh my God, that's so good. I believe that I is am. so good. I thoroughly enjoy this peanut butter. A lot of countries see it as a niche or even unpleasant taste. Others have a spread that is more culturally ingrained like oh, Nutella. Yeah. The USA cannot get enough of peanut butter, though, I consuming prefer over a billion pounds of it annually. January 24th what? is even National Peanut Butter Day. It's a cheap source of protein that most American children grow up eating. Right. So it's no wonder that it's a comfort food for many of them. Okay. Number nine, work too much. Americans are workaholics. Yeah, see, I've seen this in many videos already uh, as well. You guys are actually crazy when it comes to work, right? Like, you don't take your um your holidays you don't take the leave that you're allowed to take in the uk if you don't take all of your leave you're just a bit weird <laughs> you're just a bit weird and pretty much everyone will make sure they take all their leave because it's just three days off and they get paid for it at least compared to basically every other country in the world the majority of americans work more than 40 hours a week Mad. why do we do this to ourselves well, the conventional answer is that this attitude towards work makes the American economy the envy of the world. Right, America okay. It's a hectic, turbocharged system that okay. builds, destroys, rebuilds all at warp speed. They also tend to lack many of the things the rest of the world takes for granted, like paid holidays as well as sick and parental leave. Wow. Research has shown that happier, less stressed workers do better at their jobs. Iceland even recently tried a four-day work week that proved wildly successful. There's lots of other benefits oh my of four-day working week. It's not just the environment, you know, it's not just the, the mental health and, and economy, you know, good for the economy. It's also environmental benefits too. You know, evidence looks like when we're commuting less as a result of a four-day week, that brings down emissions. Also, energy consumption goes down. So this is this is this is a policy that's win-win for the environment, for workers, for employers. What's not to like about it? Several European countries... <laughs> He's just liking the more days off. <laughs> ...take long breaks for lunch. While the American drive is admirable, grind culture becomes problematic when it costs workers their mental health and well-being. Number eight, wow. make small talk with Work strangers. Colleagues. Americans are known for their friendliness towards strangers, yep. especially outside of big cities. It's not uncommon for Americans to smile at each other in passing, but their comfort with new people also extends to small talk saying hello or even striking up a conversation out of the blue yeah that ain't happened in the uk i'm not gonna lie bro i ain't gonna lie in the uk um you might give them a nod if you walk by like like that just just a, just a little nod but they ain't no small talk they might be in some situations right but most of the time people just keep to themselves if you're seated in an emergency exit row and feel you would be unable or unwilling to perform the duties listed on the safety card, 
Please ask a flight attendant to reseat you. In many countries, speaking to strangers unprompted can be seen as intrusive or even risky. Right. Many Americans are masters of the art, though, often happy to chat with people they've never met about the weather, sports, or whatever else comes up in conversation. That's cool, though. Carrot, honey. It looks like a carrot. Hi. Number seven, casually own guns. In many countries, gun laws are strict and gun ownership is yep. relatively rare. In yep. the U.S., gun ownership is protected by the Second Amendment, and gun ownership is the highest in the world. Despite making up 4% of the global population, Americans own 46% of civilian-held firearms. Well, that's actually crazy, bro. That's actually crazy. Pretty much half of the whole entire planet, Americans are holding the guns. The citizens. That is a wild start. Distinct gun culture, where gun ownership is celebrated or at least seen as important for personal safety. Right. Most states even allow you to open carry. Wow. But it's a lucky thing I had my pieces. Your, your pieces? My gun. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, I started blasting. Wow. Of course, the issue is extremely divisive due to the country's high rate of gun deaths. Yeah. Either way, the idea of having so many guns around is a novel one for many visitors. Guns. Lots of guns. <laughs> Number six, put sales tax on everything. Sales tax is paid when you buy something. And See, this would trip me out. You know, if I go to a shop and I'm buying things and then I go to the, the, the till or where I'm going to buy it, right? And then more money's going on. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is going on here? I've got, I've got $10, right? How is it going over? I've had it up in my head. And the business you purchased your goods from sends that money to the government. There are two types of sales tax general sales tax, and excise taxes. General sales tax is a tax levied on most goods you buy. Excise taxes are taxes levied only on certain items. Uh -huh. Most countries enact a value-added tax, or VAT, on goods or services purchased within their borders. These taxes are collected from every person in the supply chain, from the distributors to the consumers. The United States is one of the few to use sales tax, which not only vary wildly from state to state, but are only enacted after a purchase has been made. Yeah, that would the trip me out. The state treasury depends on sales taxes to pay for road repairs, education, and medical care for children, seniors, and the poor. They're also not listed in the initial price, which can lead... See, I feel like that's the where, where the problem's at, right? I feel like they need to have it in the initial price because it, it just makes sense. Like, fine having sales tax, right? Have it in the initial price. I'm going to go to America. I'm going to be so confused when I buy some foreign visitors and many Americans scratching their head as to why they're being charged more than the right. price on the product. Better or worse? You decide. It's certainly more confusing. What's the advice then? If you're going to buy a big ticket item, where is the cheapest sales tax? Well, you know, you can go online and look at all the sales tax rates for different cities. And, and if you look at one dealership or one, you know, Best Buy yeah. or something like that, you can find the different zip codes and look at the sales tax ah. rates and just see how much that a little take off and then take your family out for a nice night. There you go. Number five, oh, wow. recite a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. In many parts of the United States, school children and adults in some settings are expected to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, it really? Back then in 1892 when it was written by Francis Bellamy. Bellamy was a Baptist minister mm -hmm. and in, um, in con Is this still common like today? Like, so in today's schools right now, is this very common? In conjunction with a magazine called The Youth's Companion, uh, he wrote this, uh, at that time, 23-word Pledge of Allegiance. This is an expression that oh, they wow. will be loyal to the USA and is usually performed daily while looking at the nation's flag, which you will find hanging everywhere, by the way. This isn't something other countries do. They might salute or respect their flag and country, but to make school children recite an oath yeah. to the country? The pledge has been the subject of plenty of controversy within the U.S. too. I'm not surprised. since it mentions God. While some schools no longer require it, it remains a widespread practice. Right, the okay. The line is, um, we all look different, sound different, but we are all on the same team. Number I wonder, I wonder how common that is still like today. Number four, 
watch ads for prescription drugs. Oh, this Aside is, from New Zealand, is, the United States is the only country in the world that advertises prescription drugs directly to consumers. <laughs> Every day, Americans are bombarded with ads for prescription medications, featuring generic, pleasing imagery and a list of side effects longer than a flagpole. Side effects may include upper respiratory infection, stuff in your <laughs> nose, and sore throat and headache. Many people, Americans included, are baffled by the practice as doctors and not patients are meant to decide what drugs to prescribe. Proponents yeah. claim that advertising increases competition and lowers drug costs. Meanwhile, prescription drugs are typically far more expensive in the United States, as the U.S. doesn't regulate or negotiate drug prices. Number oh three. Oh my god. Hey, do you want to buy this drug? It's absolutely amazing at a deal price of $5, but you may lose both legs and arms. Months before days. There you Most go, you got, of got a free advert. marks calendar dates as being day first, then month, then year. It's the date. Right, okay. I no longer have an opinion on this. You guys put the month before the day, you guys win. The amount of times and the amount of videos that this has came up, and I said whatever, right? There's so many comments of reasons to why it makes sense. And the main comment is... You say the 20, no, you say January the 23rd. So you say the month before the day, right? In my head, it's the order, but let's move on. I've learned. Assuming the first two numbers are some big old space date, then you've got year, month, day. It's the other way around like it is in America. Oh! Or else the opposite as <laughs> year, month, then day. The reasoning is <laughs> that's every British person going to America. That you can go from the shortest value to the longest or vice versa. Yet, the United States and parts of Canada eschew both these formats right. by putting the month first, then day, yep. then year. The U.S. has been using this format basically since its founding, although it has used the day first format interchangeably too. The exact Wait, reason why is debatable, but as far as practicality goes, it can be useful when filling out forms to know which month it is before which day or year. <laughs> Number two, go bankrupt from healthcare. Medical costs are the cause of over 60% of all bankruptcies in the United wow. States. In 2017, one third of the money raised on GoFundMe went towards medical campaigns. Oh my God. And the site raises $650 million a year for more than 250,000 medical campaigns. See, that's a good thing about the UK, right? Is our NHS is free. Well, you know, we, pay, we obviously pay tax and that goes towards the NHS, but the NHS is free. If I break my arm, break anything, I'll go to the NHS and they'll patch me up, right? In America, is I've heard it's very, very, very expensive. Americans experience a variety of unexpected charges while getting much needed care, from surprise bills to being charged for riding in an ambulance. According wow. to one study, 71% of all ambulance providers do not take the patient's insurance. That same study found that 79% of patients who took an ambulance could get a surprise bill with an average total around $450. In some parts of Yo, the that's one expensive taxi, bro. What? Civilized world, even seeing a medical bill can be an uncommon occurrence. Yeah. Healthcare worldwide tends to be much more regulated than it is in the US. It's either funded through taxes in a single payer system yep. or else through individual insurers who are more strictly monitored. Other countries, they, they don't have this problem. Instead of every private insurance company negotiating with every healthcare provider, there's just this big list. Country, the central government, they go and they say, if you want to sell to us, to all of our people, then here's what you can charge for a checkup. Here's what you can charge for an MRI or a prescription for Lipitor. Bottom line, while there can sometimes be extra charges, for most of the world, medical debt is basically unheard of. Wow. Except in horror stories about the U.S. Can't get a credit card. I can't buy a house. I don't see me ever being out of debt. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the Man, bell to get notified. that is crazy. About you would think that, like, America, with how much they make and stuff, and I know they spend, like, with how much they spend on the military as well, you would think they would be able to implement something like we do, where the taxes go to the NHS. I know it's not NHS, but the hospitals, right? About our latest videos. You I have know, maybe the option one day. to be notified for be occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, use the Imperial Measurement System. Right. Can you explain to me? Yes. 
how the country that can send um, men and hopefully women to the moon yeah, all and still beyond. are in gallons and inches. <laughs> and when the entire world is metric, I do not understand this. <laughs> She's not wrong, right? Literally, the whole entire world is metric. So <laughs> there are three countries in the world that don't wow. use the metric system. Myanmar, Liberia, and the United States. Wow. Objectively, metric is the less arbitrary measurement system since everything goes by tens. Even Britain and Commonwealth countries have converted. The point is, yep. the US system has always been a little more accessible than metric. I know why you guys don't want to change. Americans, you just like being different, right? You just want to be you. You want to be different, which is fine. And you guys keep it. Sure, stacking up 12 thumb widths to make a foot that's still kind of weird, but it's not so weird that we're clamoring to change it. Although admittedly, they do still use measurements like feet and inches casually. So now I can't ask a distance when I visit another country. I'm like, how far is that? They're like, that's 500 kilometers. I'm not in the Olympics. <laughs> so why hasn't the US converted? We'll give you one guess. Did you say it's because of money? Because money is definitely a big factor. Oh, really? Converting to a whole new system of measurement is expensive. Other factors include a need for control and stability of the US. So inertia, basically. Why change when you don't need to? Right. You know what your mom says. Uh, if all the other countries jumped off a bridge, would the US do it too? Or something like that. A 2015 Rasmussen poll asked- Yeah, to be fair, it's not like the end of the world if they don't change, you know what I mean? Americans, if we should switch to the metric system and adopt oh, wow, Celsius of our main said temperature that? scale. 64% said no, while 21% said yes, and the remaining 15% was undecided. So oh, it looks wow. like we're perfectly fine with being different. Did you enjoy this Fair video? enough. Really good video. Really interesting. If there's anything that wasn't there that you guys think that you guys do, that the rest of the world don't, make sure you let me know in the comment section. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.